You gotta love Scott Olson. Uh, here's a guy, president of a company called Poop Doc, right? Helps by becoming regular, most of us aren't. And he says we have two brains, right? One up here, we all know about and one in the gut, right where the immune system is. And when this one's working well, so is this one. You won't wanna miss this. Then we're gonna go into the kitchen with Lindsay and talk about dairy alternatives when you're doing your cooking. Kyle and I are gonna filter through diets. I say they're all okay if you apply the Kaufman version to any diet, right? The antifungal version. And finally, I read an article in a major newspaper a couple of weeks ago go about cancer hype and it isn't about us all that and more on know the cause this program is brought to you by poop doc the number one place for the number two problem my name is doug kaufman for the past 40 years i've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease join me and a team of physicians pharmacists and scientists and soon you too will know the cause. Scott Olson, you probably uh, recognize, he owns a company called Poop Doc, folks. It's the number one place for a number two problem, and we often have number two problems. You know, you and I were talking before we went on the air when you were in makeup, which took hours, um, <laughs> it, that those buggers are smart. They are. Bacteria is smart, and now we know a lot of our immune system is in the gut. 70 to 80% of the most strategic defense system known to mankind right here in our gut. And yet we eat horribly, we drink alcohol, we swallow pills. I mean, folks, treat it with respect, and that's what I want Scott to kind of teach you because these guys communicate, and they can wake up in the morning and say, ah, uh, no go today. We're going to tide this guy over for three more days. How many of you, with a show of hands, aren't regular, don't move the bowels at all enough? You have told me stories about people who have called you, and thank you, by the way, for speaking with all these people who haven't gone to the bathroom once every month, maybe once every five weeks or so, and now they are regular, going on a regular basis. I wish I'd had a product like Poop Doc back when I did my clinical, the hospital work in nutrition, because I would just tell people, honestly, Scott, let's get some fiber. Go to Walmart and get some fiber. And there are varying forms of fiber. Yours is unique. We have Formula One, Two, and Three. Formula One, number one, get the bowels moving like a clock. That's number like two, a, yeah. a daily fiber supplement that we blended five different natural anti-inflammatory herbs, by the way, has an amazing effect on the bowel diseases. If you want to read them yourself, people write, sit down, and you know you have to really do something mm -hmm. for someone, for them to sit down and write a letter and send it in. We post them on the website, on the testimonial page, that the, the letters that have come in, you would think goes all the way to China, that many. They actually, some of them bring a tear to my eye. Because when you work in clinical nutrition, or when you've got a big family, you sometimes hear about tummy problems, bloating, belching, gas, constipation, people swallowing these multicolored pills for gut health. Uh, don't kid yourself, folks. You've got to fix, you've got to know the cause. Yes, and very yes. often, you bring this up often, the acronym for Standard American Diet, SAD, uh, and it truly is. So how's your diet? How's the bowel working? So that's number one, get it moving. Number two, keep fiber in it. What's number three? Number three is a extremely wide characteristic that guy. probiotic. So just because you see a probiotic strain or it's this many billions right. of CFUs, the, the characteristic, it's kind of like the DNA. What's the expression once it gets into the gut? Now, remember we talked about the most strategic defense system in the world protecting us against all pathogens. In other words, so we can survive. God knew what he was doing. Yep. Put a survival mechanism inside us. All we have to do is help that system. So what does a typical American diet do? Everything to destroy it. You have to think about what you're eating. Everything, of course, you teach already, and that's how I found the show. Mm -hmm. um, they call 
the, there's, there's so many um, brain cells in our gut they actually call it now the second brain. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Did you ever think, you've been at this 15, 20 years, did you ever think back then that these little buggers like have cell phones, you know? Hey, let's chat, you know? I'm glad you said that because every one of these microorganisms, this friendly bacteria, the secret power in our gut, actually when they're happy, they communicate to every cell of our body. And that is, to me, that's where the body harmony comes in. When you really start feeling good, it's not by accident. It's because your body, you're feeling it. By the way, most of our mood is, is, is affected. Our mood is affected by our gut health. Yep. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with to get, when you're in clinical nutrition, your goal is not to pack great food on top of all this stalling in the middle. Your goal is to get this working first. You folks, you would believe this, you can't believe how many people suffered from, you know, schizophrenia, OCD, depression. Once this works, That's right. so did this. Now, let's say you're a bit constipated, we piqued your interest today. How do you start taking the formula? Do you need all three? Let's talk to Scott when we get back from this short break. So Scott Olson, a buddy of mine for quite a few years here. Scott, you taught me. It's so funny because I like to think I'm in control. I have all the answers. For example, when you added pot arco, folks, this is the bark of a tree somewhere in South America that doesn't grow mildew on it, doesn't grow moss on it. It can't. The bark kills fungus. And so he's got that in his formula. So if you guys are saying, gosh, I'd like to start an antifungal and I want to get my bowel moving simultaneously, wow. You've educated me on each step that you put together. And the final step was a few years ago when you put your probiotic. Your number one formula, I totally get it. It's unique, nobody else has it, it's proprietary. Wow, does it work. So if you're moving your bowels once or twice a week and you'd like more regularity, Start with the number one, is that right? That's right. Okay, and then where does number two come in? And of course, we're talking to the president of Poop Doc. Where does number two come in? Uh, the number two formula is the fiber with the pot arco in it. Right. And by the way, that's, there's also anti-parasitic uh, characteristics that are in the, in the fiber. Fiber does amazing things. Do you, are you one of those guys that think we all have parasites to well, some Well, according extent? to the CDC, the Center we for do. Disease Control, 60% of Americans today as one parasite or another. And how many guts have they checked, right? It's probably closer to 100. Right. Okay. So, yeah. go one to two times a day. We're talking to typical America right now. Move your bowels one to two times a yes, day. Yes, okay. a daily fiber supplement. You wanna be productive. What does fiber do? Helps clean those walls. Very, okay. very important. Mm -hmm. um, helps balance blood sugar, helps lower cholesterol gives the peristaltic muscle something to push against. You want to talk about ease of delivery. You want to talk about skipping to the mailbox yep. instead of walking. Yep. It really makes a difference. Not everybody talks about that, but it's something that's in real life. By the way, some of the testimonials yep. expound on that. Having to push to go to the bathroom and having it so comfortable and easy, it's amazing, are two different things, those testimonials. It's so amazing that all, however, hundreds of testimonials, people are comfortable talking about this because 20 years ago on television, I wasn't allowed to even say this. And now we're talking about restoring the terrain of the bowels, something so normal, so natural. How did it get bad and where do probiotics fit into this? What we put in our mouth is really important. Again, again, then again, it goes back to Hippocrates, you know. Mm, the father me of medicine. Let medicine be your food and food be your medicine. Really mm. study about what you're eating. Follow the phase one and the phase two. You wanna talk about really being healthy. Move the bowels. Get the toxicity out of the body, which will take a burden off the immune system. Drinking the right amounts of water, like you and I love, exercise. Mm -hmm. Moving, moving, moving. Um, the other thing we didn't talk about was in the probiotics, what do the gut make? What else does the gut do? It's the 80 to 90% of the production of serotonin. And what does that do? It helps us sleep at night. How many people have sleeping problems? What did they eat last night? Was there antibiotics in their meat? Remember, it doesn't butcher out. 
it doesn't cook out. We eat it, it's absorbed, it's going from the mouth, right, into our intestinal tract, what's happening to our friendly flora, the, the three quarters of our immune system, destruction. So watch what you're eating. Take a very high quality probiotic, move the bowels, drink enough good clean water, and do all the things that you talk about. Hey Scott, if I'm taking your fiber, you know, the number two formula every evening, and I notice I'm traveling a lot, I'm backed up maybe three days at a time, that's when you go back to this, right. the number one formula, a bit of a blasting cap, and yet it's not a blasting cap. It helps ease regularity when you wake up in the morning. So if I'm backed up four days, you're saying take four of those. Caps. So the general guideline, you have to start somewhere. The general guideline will be, okay, if I go once every four days, we'll start with four caps a night. Okay, gotcha. Right. Three, three caps. And, and so by, the, by the end of three days of taking the same dose, we try to reserve judgment till then, you'll know, is this just right? Is this too much or is this not enough? So you and I are your number two formula fiber guys and probiotic guys. Right. But every once in a while, Christmas might come along, we might eat too much of the right. wrong foods, and we may end up having to swallow a couple of those. Guess what everybody one. asked for at Thanksgiving? Yeah. Did you bring exactly. the Poop Doc Formula One? <laughs> I love it. Poop Doc President. <laughs> Good to see you. Scott, thank you for continuing our education. You're welcome. You know, I'll bet you 80, 90% of all recipes call for milk in some form or fashion. Lindsay is in the kitchen right now offering us dairy options when cooking. Growing up, we all had pretty much one option when it came to milk, and it came from a cow's udders. There were a few variations, right? There were skim, low fat, full fat, and then the added flavor of sweetener, chocolate, strawberry, and that was it. All I can say is thank goodness times have changed and our culture is now more aware of the effects of dairy and how industrial scale dairy production cows are being raised. Eek. For one, we know dairy milk has lactose or sugar, and most times, unless organic, these dairy cows are injected with antibiotics and growth hormone, leading to the growth of fungus in us upon our consumption. So what are we to do? There are many delicious non-dairy milk options on the shelves of every grocery store these days. Almond milk, unsweetened vanilla is our family's favorite, is made from water and ground almonds. It is a dairy-free, plant-based milk and does not contain any lactose. It has a creamy, nutty taste and is delicious and usually an easy transition from cow's milk to the non-dairy milks. Our kids go straight from breast milk to almond milk. No cow's milk in between at all. Almond milk is a great source of healthy fats, which helps prevent high blood pressure and heart disease. It also has some protein, fiber, and B vitamins. It doesn't require refrigeration, so you can take it on the road easily with you. And it's a whole lot easier to make yourself than having a cow in your backyard or on your stoop. Kyle Drew, my good buddy, came in from Oklahoma City today. He has one of the most popular radio shows out there, and it's gone big, Super Health. And you'd have to know Kyle and love him like we do here to understand why his particular show would go so big. This guy thinks fungus is a problem, okay? <laughs> Kyle is different from most people I would ask to, to do this. He is not a doctor. He's a, got a degree in chemistry and one in marketing, which made him a, a pharmaceutical sales rep for many years. He now joins us, and he's going to talk about, I read Mediterranean, paleo, keto, protein diet, gluten-free. I read everything I can on these. Kyle follows him. And he's just coming off one of them. <clears throat> so if you could take just a moment, and I'm going to give you the headline. Yep. If you would do a paragraph on each of these and let the people know your thoughts. This is one guy's opinion only. Yep. Uh, we won't do the Kaufman diet because I think that's bias. And by following them, I should say, I experiment with them to see what they're like. Yes. I follow yeah. the, the, the Kaufman diet. That's my go-to, just so everybody knows. Same here. Is that a great name, diet? Yeah. First one I'd like to talk with you about. <clears throat> is a very popular diet in cardiology today. It's called the Mediterranean diet. Yep. What do you uh, know about that? I think it's pretty good. Um, it's uh, high in polyunsaturated fatty acids. It's, 
has all of the uh, the olive oils and uh, and things like that. It's it's uh, relatively low in grains. Nice fish. Um, yeah, all of the olives and things like that. I like it. There's a few things that I'm a little concerned about, but you know, I don't mean to nitpick. But I'm not really a big wine guy, just because I think the mycotoxins and the alcohol mm-hmm. uh, are, are the wrong way. Paleo diet. I think it's almost identical to phase one. Okay. I think that uh, it, in a, essentially, paleo is phase one with a different story. Phase one with a caveman story. That's really the only difference. Um, especially because paleo is starting to be controversial in that, well, wait a minute, this era era of paleo, they did have beans. And well, this one, they had starchy <laughs> carbs. And so there's starting to be some controversy. They're starting to call it the ancestral diet. But in general, I think it's pretty darn good. Used to be the caveman diet when I was a kid. That's right. People Neanderthin. Neanderthin when I was, by uh, Raymond Audet. That's he it. wrote a book called Neanderthin, and he talked all about this. So I've been to three stages of the paleo diet. Yep. It's a good diet. I agree. The protein, so I was a friend with uh, Dr. Adkins. Yep. The pro- Eads have written a book on this Eads, and so yep. forth. So what about the protein diets? The, again, I, I think it's pretty solid. All of these diets that we're talking about are friendly to fat. They're not afraid of fat. They're not afraid of protein. And they think that sugar is a bad idea. That's mm-hmm. the commonality between all of these. And in that sense, I think that uh, the protein power is, uh, is all pretty good. Most people don't know this, especially we lay people. <clears throat> But when you chew up grains, the saliva mixes with the grain and forms glucose, you know, when you swallow a grain. So what Kyle's saying, when he's saying they avoid (coughs) sugar, they avoid grains, you know, the paleo and some of these protein diets, Mediterranean diet, not totally, but mostly. They're not as strict as the Kaufman diet. What about a popular one today that you said 40 million Americans are on or something is the gluten-free Oh, 40%, diet. yeah. 1% of people have a real gluten problem, and yet 40% of Americans are on a gluten-free diet. Um, I think that's way too many people to be on the gluten-free diet. In general, again, I think that the problem is not gluten for most people. It's mycotoxins that are found in gluten-containing uh, uh, grains. Problem with the gluten-free diet is there becomes a lot of gluten-free snacks that contain corn, which are loaded with mycotoxins. So sometimes people's symptoms, they start going down initially, then they start eating the corn and the symptoms go up. And so I, I, I think that you can do better. And I know we're not supposed to talk about Kaufman diet, but I think Kaufman diet's the one that you're looking for if you're on gluten-free. Checks in the mail, buddy. Okay. I promise you. Good, good. And, and finally, take a minute or two and talk about a diet that you were on for nine months. Uh, called 16 the, months. 16 months. But who's counting? The keto diet. A ketogenic diet, we'll be real quick on this one because let's, I'd like to do a podcast and really explore Please it. Please do. If that's okay with you because the thing about the keto diet is I think it's a great short-term diet. I think it's a disaster as a long-term diet. I don't think the variety is there and I don't mean that I'm, super anxious for people to have 200 grams of carbs every day, but I do think that you're going to want to have berries and vegetables and carrots and things that you just don't have on a ketogenic diet when you're eating mostly fat, only 50 grams or less of protein, 20 grams or less of carbs. That is not a long-term diet. There you have Kyle's take on the five most popular diets, Kaufman diet. Thank you for giving that credit where credit is due. I hope you've enjoyed it. Kyle, thank you you very much. Hey friends, I want to tell you about a God thing, a God event that happened to me. I'm in San Diego at the end of April uh, doing a lecture. I lecture to oncologists, integrative oncologists, doctors who believe in IV vitamins and so forth. Uh, And then two days later, I spoke to the lay audience. Some of you viewers of Know the Cause were in the audience. Thank you so much for being there. Wow, what a few days that was. What a symposium that was. So under our door slips USA today, the weekend edition, right? It's this one. See that guy sitting in a chair? He had cancer. The article says, cancer treatment hype gives false hope. Families often hear good news that doctors have the disease in retreat, then reality strikes back hard. An amazing article, because here we are, some six, seven, eight hundred people in San Diego. This happened on the weekend. All of us got this USA Today as though it were planned, right? God just tucks that USA Today under all of our doors. And of course, we went down to breakfast and we, we were in awe. This wasn't about us. 
This wasn't about the quack oncologists who believe that vitamins are good. This was about the leading cancer chemotherapy radiation institutions, right? Those with five stars on them because their names are so big. And it teases a little bit because it gives us insight into real statistics. Really what happens with these cancer drugs? What are their percentages really? And folks, this was a great uh, uh, jumping off point for so many of our lectures. You know, all they had to do is hold up USA Today and everyone started laughing in the audience. I'm telling you, uh, with friends who have passed to cancer, in the early days, everybody hears the good news. Long as you got your insurance card, you're gonna hear great news. Oh, that cancer. We can defeat that cancer. Oh, we got to. I think we better start asking our oncologists for stats. They're just office stats. You got 2,000 folders up there. How many have been there for five years and how many of those are still alive? I mean, that's a fair question. Why don't we get those stats? Because if only 20 of those are still alive, you may not be the doctor I wanna see. I think there's a, a paradigm shifting in medicine today, not just with cancer, with diabetes, with lupus, with migraine headaches, with skin problems. I think what's happening is the paradigm is shifting over to where even oncologists, you should have been at this meeting. You should have been in the doctor symposium, which I attended. They're angry, folks. These are really, really good. And, and look, all doctors become doctors to help people. But somewhere along the way, they are re-socialized. They are re-taught that the grandma's chicken noodle soup they took when they were a little boy and girl that really helped them get over tummy aches is quackery today because there's a pill for that. This re-socialization process is taking place in medical schools all over the world. You don't believe it? Antibiotics that you and I took when we were kids and some of you are still taking are now intimately linked. The more you take, the more intimacy with cancer. Five different kinds of cancer, including the top four, colorectal, lung, prostate, and breast. You don't hear that from your doctor. Well, it looks like an infection in your two-year-old's ear. So I'm gonna put him on antibiotics. Wait a minute, I heard antibiotics can make you sick later in life, very sick. Are you sure that's an infection? Could I try beta-glucan? Could I try oregano? Could I try some of the products you see advertised here on Know the Cause First? Doc, is this eminent? Is that eardrum gonna pop? No, I don't think so then can I change this little guy's diet? Do you know one of the most potent remedies, I think, for inner ear infections, if it hasn't gone too far? The astute pediatrician will tell you. It's called lean over. Are you breastfeeding? Squeeze three drops of breast milk into that ear or into that sinus and watch what happens. God's miracles are all around us. We just turn our back on them. Folks, it's so amazing to me how this is a story of a man who said the cancer doctors told him your brother will be fine. Oh, we've seen this cancer before. Whether or not, doc, you've seen it is irrelevant. Has it seen you? How many of those with that same kind of cancer are alive? Can I have three phone numbers and call them? You do this in business. You do it in landscaping. You do it when you build a home. Why don't we do it with doctors? Because we're afraid of upsetting the apple cart. If this were my brother, I'd sure ask a lot of questions. And then I'd look for naturals. Many people want to go medical. Many people want to go naturals. That's the freedom we enjoy today in America. Just be careful. Isn't that amazing? Do you think we're overselling cancer therapies? Folks, they don't mean to not tell you the truth. They really think their pills are going to save you. Now, let's move on to something very healthy, and that is the number one, the number two, and the number three formula of Poop Doc, right? Here it is. This is the little wand that stirs up the fiber that I use every night. Great, great little package there for those of you who aren't regular or who are experiencing irregularity. Thank you, Lindsay in the kitchen, the Know the Cause kitchen, teaching us about dairy options. Uh, thank you, Kyle. What about those diets? Apply the Kaufman version to any of them. And finally, thank you to the newspaper for expounding on the truth about cancer hype. We'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.